Thanks, guys. Um, well, I mean, obviously, the the decision we made today um, was a it was a tough one. Um, you know, really appreciate what AJ has done here for our football team on the field, uh, in the community, um, and we had discussions back and forth, and I really realized we got to a spot where it's going to be hard to kind of get a deal done, um, and the trade thing kind of manifested itself from them, and um, really started working on that probably in the last 20, 18, 20 hours, and came together pretty quickly um, this afternoon. Wish him nothing but the best uh, moving forward, and uh, excited for Traylon and what he can add to our football team, and then the ability to slide back uh, from 26 there, and we you know got get what we felt is really good value um, over the next couple rounds uh, was good for us. So think about keeping him. He, he didn't have power to not be here next year under contract. Yeah, we talked about a lot of things. You know, there were a lot of different scenarios that that we went through. Um, you know, those those are the these are the decisions that I'm faced with. They're hard decisions, and there's a lot of discussion that goes into them, uh, a lot of thought that goes into them. Um, at the end of the day, we 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 have to make I have to make the hard decisions, and um, there's a lot of things that that impact those decisions. Um, you know, certainly the finances uh, impact the decisions, and um, Trying to get value um, when we can, and um, you know that's that's the decision we made uh, made today. How do you set about team better when you have to trade away one of your best playmakers? Yeah, those are the decisions that we make. We're excited about Traylon. Uh, he's been an exciting player in the SEC. Um, you know, big yards per catch. He's a big target. He's fast. He's competitive. Um, He's a player that we spent time with. He came here on a 30 visit, got to know him, and um, you know, excited to get him here in the offense and, and, and watch him work. Mike, you've done nothing but publicly back, AJ. Both of you have done that um, throughout the course of this. How did this kind of go down from your standpoint? The same exact way it went with John. Our offices are, you know, we share a wall, so um, really comfortable with how everything went down. And, and we've been in lockstep throughout this whole process, and then we move forward, and and we're able to get picks that we both agreed on at that time, so I feel real good about it. Just report that said that not as uh, long as I'm the head coach, as long as I'm the head coach here, I want to have AJ Brown on my football team. What changed? I think John just covered it, Paul. I appreciate you reading my words back to me. And I know you guys never coached a, a bunch of grown men that you put a lot of time into it. I, I love all our players. I love AJ personally. I know how John feels about him. Um, but very comfortable with how this this went down and how uh, John and I, and I were able to navigate and try to support him and make decisions. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we understand that if we're going to be here a while, we're not going to be able to keep every single player that we draft and develop. And, and we, we're, 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 this is where we're at, and uh, we're excited to be able to be picking players tomorrow. I guess that AJ kind of cut off communications with the organization. Is that accurate? And you know, does that play a part in you realizing that maybe it just wasn't going to work if, if that was true? Um, you know, when when dealing on the contract stuff, uh, John. I, I mean, I dealt with the, the representatives, you know, there, and um, went back and forth really over the last you know two to th two to three weeks, and. I just realized that the the gap was really too far for us to to bridge, um, and, and in doing that, that's that's where those hard decisions and those tough discussions come in. Um, it's it's not easy, trust me. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, that's what Amy has charged me to do: is make those tough decisions and hard decisions. Um, and like I said, wish AJ nothing but the best. Appreciate everything he did here, um, and, and excited to really excited to work with Traylon. A lot of people the gap being too big to bridge. Why was right now during the draft the best time to make that move as opposed to I don't know, waiting till next off season or further in this off season? Yeah, I think it's it's really it's the it's the draft capital uh, that's involved. You know, it's um, you you get return uh, on the trade uh, with the ability to pick players um, in this draft. Um, that's really kind of what dictated the timing of everything. What's the message to the next guy who has a good three years on 
his first contract and wants more than you're willing to pay. Uh, keep, keep, keep working hard. And again, every decision is, is different, Paul. Um, there's, there's a lot of thought that goes into that. Um, and, and every situation is, is really u unique. You guys have been really content for rookies to be slow participants and slow contributors. You have a different expectation for Traylon Burks considering you just traded away your number one wide receiver? I don't think we're really content with anything. We want guys to come in here and, and work hard and, and, and learn what to do and, and be good teammates and um, you know, earn the right to go out there and play. And We've seen some guys it takes, it takes longer for that to happen and um, some guys catch on pretty quick. Do you see similarities in Traylon's game with AJ, kind of the physical style? Are there maybe parallels there, even though they're they're different players? Yeah, you 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 could probably draw some some similarities, but I think you know each individual player is, is different. They have a you know kind of a their own unique way of how they how they play the game. And um, you know, the more we spent time with with Traylon and 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 watched the film and dug into it, felt like that. You know, he did a lot of things physically that, that we like in uh, for that position. Mike, you talked to us before about how the, the locker room is the player's space and you don't like to get too involved in how they manage things. Does this impact how you have to talk to guys about things or how you'll approach it? About what? Just about the trade situation like and the message that it sends. And, and how what message does it send, Buck? Just uh, that this is a super talented player and understanding the situation that you guys have just laid out and that may send a message or may be received by players in ways that you can't necessarily anticipate. Well, there's a lot of things that we can't anticipate. I just am confident that we went to uh, the extreme to, to try to try to keep uh, AJ here. I mean, I was involved with the process through the entire time. Um, so, you know, we're going to continue to um, – you know, coach our guys, develop them, you know, try to, you know, make it about the team. And, you know, this is just another example of making tough decisions that, you know, hopefully it, in the long run, it's going to make our team better. I know that it, it probably doesn't get received by that publicly, but, you know, this is, this was a, this was a difficult process to, to get through. And, you know, I know what the gap that we had to bridge was. This wasn't, uh, you know, this wasn't easy. Thank you. As someone who's, you know, as a coach, put him in a position to succeed in each week. I know Traylon's not going to be a quote unquote replacement for AJ, but how does his availability when you guys made the trade, what he can bring you guys, maybe ease and make you more comfortable with what happened? We we've liked him since you know when when AJ was on our roster. Uh, he was he was a player that you know that we were targeting um, just because of the skill set that we mentioned and uh, you know the big the physical. Uh, did a great job coming in here. Knew that um, you know there were some things he probably had to overcome for for that first introduction in Indianapolis. He was you know, very self-aware and and, and you know, had a great visit with everybody. You know the installation, uh, the visit with with John and I and, and everybody else. So you know he was a player that we really liked, whether you know AJ was on our roster or wasn't. John, did you try to get up to 13 with the Eagles? I mean, was it pretty clear how long it's going to be Philly? did this with yeah that, that's kind of where it, it 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 ended up uh gentry there was a couple of teams that that called and um i'd say they showed them the most interest and it kind of i'd say it accelerated um this morning um and, and you know spent most of the afternoon kind of working through things and um at the end of the day just you know glad we were able to kind of come to an agreement and uh, make the decision we made. John, much paid. thought to stay in at, at 26, John, or uh, was that a tough call? Is yeah, we know? did, John. I mean, there was, I mean, there's, there's still some players. I mean, obviously that we like, and we just felt the, the value of the, the trade uh, for us. Um, it, it was, it was kind of, it was too good to pass up because we felt like it allowed us to get some, you know, more cracks at players, um, you know, over the next couple nights, and you know, the extra pick on, on Saturday. John, you've paid plenty of guys. Yes, sir. Stay or team? Why not stay in it and negotiate it out with him when you still had the year of control? And this organization's done so poorly at receiver for so long, and you finally had a guy. Yeah, again, I, there was just a, there was a lot of circumstances that went into it, uh, Paul. A lot of thought, a lot of different things that you know we, we had to work through. And you're right, like we we have compensated players uh, that are on our team. Um, guys in free agency, 
Um, we, we have done that. And again, I just come back to the, to the gap that, that we were going to have to bridge there. And it just seemed, you know, really too far for, for us to really make any, any progress. Um, and that the return uh, currently for this draft, uh, what we're able to acquire, um, was good value for us. AJ personally, did you guys, either of you guys get a sense that he wanted out? Um, I think AJ uh, loved it here, but I think um, I, you, that would be a better question for, for AJ. Um, I think that he and Mike had a great relationship. Um, I had a great relationship with him. Um, and those are just things that we have to work through and um, at the end of the day, make the, make the tough decisions, you know, certainly you know, for you know, short term, but also long term. John, you mentioned the gap, the gap uh, being too big, uh, far to bridge. How much uh, the skyrocketing right wide receiver uh, prices this year, how much did that play a part in maybe raising the gap? I think it did, Teresa. I think that you know, when, these, when these guys started to come in contractually, um, there was kind of a new bar. You know, the bar had kind of been raised on, on that position, and um, we were trying to work through that and find some, some common ground. Um, but, but in the end, just felt like it was, a, it was at, a, at a spot we weren't, we weren't going to be able to get to. The alternative, if you didn't extend him but kept him, would have obviously been the tag. Is that something that you didn't see as a reasonable foreseeable possibility? Um, yeah, we, I mean, we didn't get into that. I mean, the, all options were on the table, uh, Luke. Um, in the end, when the, when, the, when the scenario presented itself um, to get value uh, pick-wise uh, now, um, that was the decision that we felt was best. You've got nine picks now, John. How, how much damage you feel like you can do with that? Do you think maybe you use some of this fodder to get back up at, to get targets? Yeah, that's a great point. I think that you know, being at the top of, of two, I mean, you never know. Um, until you get closer to your pick, if you're going to get action on that pick. Um, we had a couple sniffs on 26 uh, from other teams, um, but then the Jets came in there late and, and really gave us one that, that you know, we didn't feel like we could turn down. Um, but it does, you know, adding the, taking 101, which we were able to get tonight and move it up to the top of the third round. We're at the top of up two, top of three. Um, you know, picked, up, picked, up, picked up an extra uh, fifth round pick. So we've got, you know, a two. Uh, two threes, two fours, two fives, and two sixes. So we've got, you know, quite a bit of picks that we think we can move around and give us a little bit of flexibility um, if we need to slide back into the bottom of the second. If somebody's there, you know, now we've got some ammunition to do that. Mike Ryan, Tannehill, and AJ both talk consistently about the chemistry that they had and how they were locked in. How comfortable are you as the coach with what Tannehill will have around him? I know you got more draft picks, but what he'll have around him and his comfort level with. Burks and a new receiver in Woods and those sorts of things. Yeah, that was going to be the the plan. Obviously, we start over every year, and you know we're going to get those guys back. Robert's not going to be able to work, but you know we'll get Traylon in here uh, in a few weeks, uh, and then you know we'll, we'll get those guys working. We'll, we'll, we're excited to start phase two uh, and build that process of the trust and understanding and, and working through some of the new stuff that we're going to be doing. Mike, is, uh, is is Ryan here yet? Uh, our players are off until Monday. The voluntary program starts on Monday. I'll let you guys know on Monday who's here if I talk. Is it more important for him to get here now with new wide receiver to work with? Um, well, Traylon will be here after rookie minicamp, which will be on the, the 13th, I believe.